Okay, this is going to be the second of the trig substitution videos. Um, now in the first video, we looked at the problem where we just had 1 over a square root. The big difference in this problem is that now we're going to add an x squared to this, so some additional x's, and we'll see what kind of effect that has on the problem. Um, just a reminder of what the steps are. The very first step is to figure out what kind of problem you've got. So if the problem looks like this, let's look at our steps that we had. And by the way, if you have not done it, I would definitely recommend watching the first video, and it'll show you where the steps, how the steps were set up. <clears throat> okay, now what steps came up is this. There's eight steps all together. The first one says this, determine which one of the three forms that you had. So to determine which of the three forms we've got, again, looking at the problem, we've got the square root of 16 minus x squared. So in which format does that fall? Well, let's go back and look at our three possible cases. Remember, first case, the square root of a squared minus u squared, or it might be a squared plus u squared, or it might be u squared minus a squared. Now in our problem, what we've got is 16 minus x squared, so it's going to fall in this category right here. So we can eliminate the other two cases, and all we got to do is just worry about these two formulas down here. So the square root's going to be a times the cosine, u is going to be a times the sine, and that's what we'll use as we solve the problems. Okay, back to, back to the sample. Okay, now first thing to do, I'll go ahead and change this into something squared minus something squared form. So I'm going to think of this as being equal to um, the integral of, and I'll go ahead and put the bar across here. So we've got 1, and I would rewrite this as x squared here. Then you've got the square root of. Now instead of 16, go ahead and write that as 4 squared. Then you've got minus, and write this as x squared. Then you've got dx. So what that does, um, uh, this right here is what a is equal to, and this is going to be your u. So you've got a and u. Now what the formulas look like, um, let's go ahead and stick those on there. So just a reminder, the square root is going to turn into a times the cosine, u is going to turn into a times the sine. So now it's just a matter of running through all the steps. So let's go ahead and try them. We'll use the same process that we did last time. All right. Uh, so the first step is to determine which of the three forms you have, and we've done that. The next thing, express the square root in terms of theta. So we'll go to step two. And just like we did last time, um, we'll go ahead and put this first step in red, So or second step in red. So step two says express um, the square root in terms of a times the cosine of theta. So what we've got is the square root of, now in our problem we've got 4 squared minus x squared, and this is going to be equal to uh, a times the cosine of theta. So we're changing it from an x problem into a theta problem. Now remember a is equal to 4, so in this problem it'll wind up being the square root of um, 4 squared minus x squared. And again, a is equal to 4, so this will just turn into 4 times the cosine of theta. And now you've got the square root in terms of theta. So you've got the first thing you need. So let's take a look at the next step. The next step says <clears throat> express dx in terms of theta. So let's go back and we'll do that. <clears throat> now again, this one we'll do in blue. So this will be step three. So for step three, you actually start with just this right here. So u is equal to a times the sine of theta. Now u is equal to x, a is equal to four, and you've got the sine of theta. Now what you're trying to do, you're trying to get rid of this dx right here. So you need to find dx d theta. So let's take the derivative of x with respect to theta would be equal to 4, and the derivative of the sine is the cosine. Okay, that gets you to dx is equal to 4 times the cosine of theta uh, d theta. Now what this does, this will take care of the dx. So now you've changed the dx into theta. Now in that last problem, on the next step, 
it says this. Uh, this is the fourth step. Express any remaining x's in terms of theta. Now, on the last problem, we didn't have any remaining x's, but on this problem, we do have some remaining x's. So what we'll do is this, and we'll go ahead and switch this one to black. So this is going to be step number four. So what step number four says is you've got to also express this x squared right here in terms of theta. Now to do that, go ahead and come back to this step right here. You know that x is equal to four times the sine of theta. Therefore, go ahead and square both sides. So take the x and square it and take the four times the sine of theta and square it. So this is gonna give you x squared is equal to, now square the four and square the sine, and you'd have 16 times the sine squared of theta. So here is the remaining thing that you need. So to change your whole problem from an x problem into a theta problem, you now got the three pieces. You needed the dx, you needed the square root, and you needed the x squared, and you've got all three of the parts right here. So now we'll go ahead and move on to step five, which says, um, go ahead and rewrite the integral in terms of theta. So we want to turn it from an x problem into a theta problem. So we'll put step five, say, down here. So step five would be, now again, we've just got the integral or the antiderivative of, and again, we'll go from here straight across to here. Uh, we've still got the one in the top. Now just replace each thing with what it's equal to. And actually, I think we'll wind up having to extend this just a little bit. Okay, first of all, the x squared is equal to 16 times the sine squared of theta. So we'll make this be 16 times the sine squared of theta. So there's the x squared. Now you need the square root part. Well, the square root part is equal to 4 times the cosine of theta. So we'll put that in parentheses. That'll be 4 times the cosine of theta. Then you need the dx part. Well, the dx part is equal to 4 times the cosine of theta, d theta. So this is going to be 4 cosine theta, d theta. Now, right away, if you can, now you've got it set up in terms of theta. So we'll take a look at the next problem. And the next thing says, uh, go ahead and evaluate this new trig integral. Now, if you can do that, go ahead and simplify stuff. In this case, we can actually simplify a couple of things. The 4 in the uh, top will cancel out the 4 in the bottom. Cosine in the top cancels out the cosine in the bottom. So what we're left with would be uh, the integral of 1 over uh, 16 times the sine squared of theta, and then the whole thing is d theta. Now, a couple of things you can do, we'll go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. Um, the one, that's a, say, one over 16 is a constant, so you can bring that to the outside. So one over 16 times the integral of the sine, uh, one over the sine squared, theta and d theta. Now, at this point, it really just becomes a kind of a trig problem. We'll scoot things down here just a little bit. Um, you need to find the antiderivative of 1 over the sine squared. But you don't have a formula for that. So on some of these problems, you've got to use trig identities or some other method to put it in a form that you can take the antiderivative of. So in our case, we've got 1 over 16 times the antiderivative. Now, remember, uh, 1 over the sine squared is the cosecant squared. And you do have an antiderivative for the cosecant squared. So use a trig identity and turn this into cosecant squared of theta d theta. Now, the reason you did that is just remember from your trig identities, the, deriv the derivative of the cotangent will give you the negative of the cosecant. Therefore, the integral of the cos or cosecant squared, the integral of the cosecant squared will take you back to the cotangent. So you have an antiderivative for this, and it will turn into 1 over 16. And the antiderivative of the cosecant squared would be the negative of the cotangent. You may have to look back in your uh, integral rules to find that. So the cotangent squared, or cotangent plus theta. So the integral of the cosecant squared turns into the negative of the cotangent. 
So th at this point, that's going to get you down to this. Now you've got the negative, put the negative out in front. So negative 1 16th um, cotangent theta plus c. So you found the antiderivative. Now the last thing you've got to do is this. You've got the answer in terms of theta, but you've got to put the answer in terms of x. So let's look at the next step in our process. Um, this was step six, actually. We evaluated the antiderivative. So on step six, we evaluated <coughs> antiderivative here. Okay, the next step says, um, <coughs> now draw the triangle and label the sides, and then change the answer back in terms of x. Now just a reminder, the reason that you're drawing this triangle <coughs> is so that you can change uh, the theta problem back into an x problem. And before we go on, let's take a quick look at the triangle rules again. So just to remind you, on any triangle, uh, you've got opposite adjacent hypotenuse. So the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent, and so on. So that's what the triangles are going to look like. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. And what we're going to do is uh, now draw a triangle to change this thing back into x form again. So this would actually be step number seven. I think we'll go back to red on this one. <coughs> So we'll do step number seven. And just draw yourself a rough triangle. So on all these problems, I draw a triangle that looks like this, and draw yourself just a right triangle. Um, put angle theta here. And just a reminder, this is the opposite side. Uh, this is the hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent. So you've got those three sides. Now you have to figure out how are the sides labeled for the problem that you're actually working on. And to find that, let's go back up to, um, let's see, this step right here. You've got x is equal to, actually you can go to this step, so either one of these would be the same. x is equal to 4 times the sine of theta, therefore uh, x divided by 4 would be equal to the sine of theta. So we'll come down here and take advantage of that. So if x is equal to 4 times the sine of theta, then x divided by 4 would be equal to the sine of theta. Now remember, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So what that means is that for this problem, no, I think I'll switch back to black here on this one, <coughs> um, the opposite side is x, so you can put an x right here, and the hypotenuse is 4, so this side's going to be 4. And as we talked about before, the remaining side is always just whatever that original square root was. So the original square root was the square root of 16 minus x squared. So that means that down here, this remaining side is going to be the square root of 16 minus x squared. So now you've got all three sides of the triangle. Now, the reason you did this is so that you can take this thing right here and turn it back into an x problem. So here actually is the answer, but it's in terms of theta. So to change this back into an x problem again, you have to look at your triangle, and we'll kind of put a little arrow going down here, and this will be the last step. You've got the negative 1 over 16. Now the cotangent, let's talk about that for a second. Come down here to change the cotangent back in. The cotangent remember, is equal to the adjacent side over the opposite. So adjacent over opposite. So on this problem, it would be equal to the adjacent side is the square root of 16 minus x squared, and the opposite side is x. So the cotangent theta will turn into this right here. So we can go ahead and put that in our problem here. This is going to turn into uh, the square root of 16 minus x squared, all divided by x, and then don't forget to tack on the plus c for the end of it, and you would be done. That's going to be the answer to the problem. So again, yet once you find the antiderivative in terms of theta, the whole purpose of drawing this triangle is to be able to turn this trig solution back into an x solution. And if you draw the triangles and labels aside, you'll know that you can change the cosine of theta into or cotangent of theta into this right here. So draw the triangle, and it'll help you make the change. 
And again, if you follow the steps, let's just take one last look at those little steps again. If you run through all these steps um, and go in this order, it will change it back into it again. So change it all in terms of theta, find the antiderivative, and then change it all back in terms of x again. So we'll take one last look at our problem. And what we did started out with a, a problem in terms of x, figured out which one of the forms that we need so you know which formulas to use, uh, turn the square root into theta, turn the dx into a theta, and turn any remaining x's into a theta. So that changes the entire problem from an x problem into a theta problem. Simplify what you can, find the antiderivative, and then the last step is to change it from a theta problem, using the triangle, change it from a theta problem back into an x problem, and you're done. So there's a second example of trig substitution.